trick you so we can stop our um, immune response and a symptom will get in better and uh, control up with our exposure. Um, and we also can uh, bite my attention and identify to a, um, a, a um, rough reaction like some people can, you know, have asthma by taking aspirin or uh, by the blocker. Uh, food allergy, right? Some people will have um, allergic to pea pe peanut or uh, peanut or seafood can also relate to the uh, asthma. And um, we also have uh, daily mo monitoring as P up with our um, flow breaker. And um, we have to have a, a plan for a um, symptom when they go to a crisis. All right, Kato. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I, yeah, this is my slide. I will go a little bit more about like why specifically like, the two blocker like by going to the autonomic innovation the lungs because I feel it's going to help to know why we do like better to blocker, uh, better to agonist, I'm sorry. Better to agonist or why we do anti uh, muscari, uh anti cholinergic drug. So talking about like the innovation of the lungs, so the parasympathetic receptor in the lungs is M3 and is present in the smooth muscle and the lung you know, comprises a smooth muscle. And, um, and the um, function of M3 receptor are contraction of the smooth muscle in clans. Um, and when it contracts too much, it can cause asthma. So that's why we use anticholinergic cholinergic rock to treat asthma and one of the rock is ipratropinum which in the next slide we'll see about that. Uh, but uh, we also have the sympathetic innovation which is mainly beta 2 receptor as you can see in the table which is taken from my school PowerPoint. Um, the beta 2 receptor innovate the vascular bronchial smooth muscle, the lead liver and the skeletal muscle and the effect of the beta 2 receptor in relaxation. So that's why we have the beta 2 agonist receptor, which is increase the function of beta 2, which cause more the, the bronchioles is more relaxed, easy to breathe. So um, the current first line of treatment, can you go to the next slide, please? So. So that's why the first slide of the treatment here is a short acting beta agonist because it's provider, you know, um, it's act directly on the beta two receptor and it provide it, it relieves the symptom and um, prevent exercise induced asthma. And one of the uh, one of the prototype drug is albuterol, and that is the short acting. And um, like I say because uh, we have the parasympathetic innovation in M3 receptor. So the ipratropium is acting on um, inhibit the M3 receptor. So it can use in the combination with SABA for SABA is short acting beta agonist for acute treatment. However, um, however, because it blocking on the sympathetic and parasympathetic receptor. So it also may have like, um, um, some serious side effect and one of the side effects for using albuterol which is a better to agonist is you may have uh, tachycardia which is the um, um, how to say tachycardia how to say it in Vietnamese like tim đập nhanh yeah attention yeah yeah, because um, in the reviews table, as you can see, we have like in the in the heart, we have like beta one innovation, and when we use beta two at the high dose, it can also activate beta one. So that's either one of the uh, side effect when you use beta two uh, uh, agonist rock. However, using in uh, using it at inhalation, should the albuterol, which reduce the side effect of tachycardia. Um, also, like uh, Anhip say that uh, we also use corticosteroid to reduce the inflammation from like um, overacting macrophage and eosinophil. Uh, so we also use bre um, brednisolone and other. 
I don't know much about corticosteroids, so mm -hmm. Hip and An Hong will say more about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would talk mm -hmm. about that later. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, I'm not sure about like the second line, but uh, the long acting beta agonist, we have subutamol and formoterol. Would I say because they, they are both beta agonists. And so if you use for a long time, it can lead to like severe outcome. One of, one of the outcome have been done with, uh, uh, one of the side effects have been done with the beta 2 agonist, like I say, is a uh, tachycardia and um, order like. Like most, like um, you guys have anything to say add into it? Okay, I think it's uh, easier next time when you add a little pictures to it because these are all words. Uh, it's very hard to follow. Uh, but I have a couple of slides uh, about the pathway later. Um, so just go ahead and finish, and then uh, we can do some question later. All right. So um. So uh, there is some complication associated with the asthma, right? So this is um, the first one is the atelectasis, right? Atelectasis, I mean the alve the alveoli is is co is uh, collapsing. It's uh, maybe due to a surfactant or the um, a rupture of the alveoli. Uh, it can associate with the pneumonia and. Um, it can associate with the new more thorax, right? It can because like yeah, sometimes the our infection can um, cause the spontaneous new more thorax. Then um, medication side medication specific uh, side effect or adverse reaction, uh, respiratory fail, and there are, and it can cause death. So, um, so, um, so how we uh, go into the uh, with the therapy for asthma? So it depend on um, visit. Um, it depend on the symptom and uh, respond to a treatment. So uh, there is uh, you know like for the, for asthma treatment, we have we need to have the uh, the long term goal and the short term goal. For the um, for the long term goal, we. It's associated with a different kind of uh, medication we will use for the long-term goal. And for the short-term goal, it also has a specific medication um, and um, immunosuppression for short-term. And we also need to have a, um, a review daily cell schedule management plan and also need to do some medical adjustment by on, on a symptom. So if a symptom getting worse, then we will increase a dose of corticosteroid, for example. Yeah, so um, we need to ask for our patient, you know, like if they uh, if they smoking or they are um, relative in the household smoking, they need to stay away from um, smoking or stay away um, or have uh, some prevention for the secondhand smoker exposure and try to remove or identify any allergen or irritant that can uh, trigger um, the asthma. And um, uh, then can also treat for allergic um, um, rhinitis and use up inhaler with the uh, aerosol chamber and you uh, um, and uh, use some medication for it. All right, so for with the asthma action plan, right, for the first one, we need to uh, say more monitoring the symptom. So uh, through a symptom, we can know whether we in the uh, intermittent state or in the uh, um, severe asthma. And we also uh, need to uh, measure our lung function. Like, so for example, we can uh, measure by the uh, spirometry. And now uh, if the symptom getting out of control, we need to go to see a doctor, a uh, medical emergency room. All right. So uh, can you hand me this out this slide? Yeah, so uh, this is what they call in the hospital, the asthma treatment plans. Um, this really doesn't have anything to do with us uh, as far as 
you know, it's more of like how the hospital monitor the asthma. Uh, and I don't think this is very useful for us. I think this for more of like the nursing side. Um, usually this, well, before you send the, the, the patient out of the hospital, they go through all this uh, to make sure that everything is set up the, for the patient. All right, so I think we can skip that part. Um, so let's do some question now, because I feel like asthma is so common, people know about it. Uh, but the thing is, what do they test you uh, when it comes to uh, questions? Uh, okay, so I'm gonna share my slide um, and then we can go to the questions a little bit. Okay. All right, so let's do the first questions. All right, so um, I'm gonna have someone to read it just so that you guys know how to pronounce uh, things a little bit. All right, let's pick, um, anyone wanna read it? Okay, uh, Hong Vo, you can go ahead. A 12 years old girl present to the ED with a difficulty Breathing after playing soccer outside in the cold. Mm -hmm. The problem seems to have the same problem according to the mom. Mm -hmm. On the examination, her respiratory rate is 24. She is a tapnic and with the intercostal retraction. The chest is hyperresonant to percussion. Respiratory weeds are heard on the auscultation. The BFF show a decrease in the FI. FE1 over FBC ratio, which of the following is the underlying pathologies of the patient lungs? Go ahead, just read the choices. Yeah, I, I will read the choice. A, abnormally dilated, dilated bronchi with mucus and neutrophil. Mm -hmm. B, hypertrophy and hyper laser of the mucus secreting gland in the bronchi. Mm -hmm. C, dilated air space with the alveolar wall destruction. D, intraalveolar hyaline membrane composed of fibrin and cellular debris. E, mucoid exudate forming a cast blocking in the airway. Okay. All right, first, uh, before we go, the PFT is, is uh, short for pulmonary function test, uh, basically just testing how good your lungs are. All right. So what do you guys think the uh, patient has? The first question. It's not a tricky question. We've been talking about it for an, an hour. What do you think the patient has? Combo? Yeah, let me see. The patient has? All right, so let's, let's look at the age. Yeah, I think okay. not not dilated. Uh, I think it's um. So uh, before you answer the, answer the questions, like I want to see what yeah. do you think the patient has, before you even look at the answer. Yeah. Chart. Yeah, I think the patient have uh, asthma exacerbation. Okay, so what makes you think that the patient have asthma? Um, I I think because um, the. Patient is uh, 12 years old and uh, present mm -hmm. with um, dyspnea. So young, okay, dyspnea. Uh, young, mm -hmm. yeah, dyspnea. And uh, it was triggered by um, exercise. Okay. And he, he present with uh, the side of respiratory failure, uh, mm -hmm. increase the respiratory rate and uh, intercostal retraction. Yeah, but that's uh, every, all the lung, but the, you know, uh, respiratory problem will have the same uh, symptom. But what tell you exactly is uh, asthma? Yeah, and the, the chest is a uh, hyperresonant is, is a glue too. And the, um, the lung function test shall yeah, decrease. Yeah. yeah, so the lung it's, function test is decreased. Yeah. Okay, so that's a sign first. So if, you, if I tell you that the, the lung function test decrease, what does that put into restrictive versus obstructive lung disorders. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I, I know that. Okay, uh, so the, the ratio is less than 70%. Is that obstructive or is it restrictive? Uh, I think uh, 
is uh, obstructive. Okay, yeah. So just think about like the ratio is low, I mean, something is obstructing the airway, right? Okay, so yeah. there's only a few things that fall under the obstructive pattern. So COPD, you know, chronic uh, bronchitis, right? And then the emphysema, asthma, bronchiectasis. So if you look at this, you know, you see that the expiratory wheezes, it, and then the, the, the patient is 12 years old. And also uh, the brother also has the same problem. So it's like, uh, you know, inherited disease. So all of those symptoms, it point toward asthma, okay? So now like, you know, that the question talking about asthma, and now we have to understand what is the underlying pathology of asthma? And what do you think one of those five choices uh, is asthma? I think uh, the, the two, the two um, common and that's, uh, that is in the pathology in the asthma, mm -hmm. it is the, uh, the inflammation and the constriction. Okay. Yeah. So A, B, C, D, E, which one? Yeah, maybe uh, D. Maybe D? Okay. Uh, it's yeah. close. Yeah, it's close. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's good job. Okay. Hey, yeah. what do you think? These are questions <laughs> that you're going to be answering. Uh, I think E. Okay. All right. I can explain. Because the B, B is not really, uh, not really right, right? Because B, I, I'm thinking about the uh, chronic, uh, chronic uh, bronco. Bronco or something. Okay, Bron so, uh, so remember when I talk of, yeah, talk about respiratory. Okay, yeah, so when you think okay. about lung, you know, problems, you always have to divide it. Where Where is, a, you know, the problem? Is it upper, is it lower, or is lower down? Okay, so remember when I talk about asthma, it's been bronchial, right? And upper is bronchi. So A is talking about bronchi, right? Um, so we have abdominal dilated bronchi with mucus and neutrophils. It's in the bronchi, so it's definitely not asthma, right? The same thing with B, it's also hypertrophy and hyperplasia it's in the bronchi, so it cannot be asthma, right? So you come down to C, D, and E, right? And then again, C is what, an alveolar problem? So most likely it probably like COPD or emphysema. Uh, it's not asthma, again, if you have to think about the bronchioles. So you come down to D or E, so it's very um, uh, the tricky because D, when I think about hyaline membrane, it's only one condition that can cause that, the ARDS. Uh, it's, it's hard, but you have to remember the keyword. If you see intra alveolar hyaline, hyaline membrane, that's ARDS, okay? So, uh, and then just come down to E. So a lot of inflammation uh, in asthma, it causes the, uh, the lining of the, um, the, you know, the bronchial to become separated so that, you know, the mucus secreting a lot of mucus and it blocked the, the pathway. So that's why a long time ago, when you, uh, you know, go to the hospital, when people have asthma, you see a lot of people just slamming on the back just to get the mucus out. So, I mean, so that's why E is a correct answer. Okay, so, oh, nice. again, so A <laughs> would be uh, bronchiectasis. Again, you have to remember all this, okay? So when I say decrease in the uh, PFT, the ratio is decreased, then it put it into the uh, obstructive lung patterns, okay? So you have to think about bronchitis, emphysema, uh, bronchiectasis, okay? And then asthma. And then just know that asthma is due to inflammation, irreversible uh, uh, bronchoconstriction, and sometimes it also have mucus blocking the airway, all right? So that's the first question. Uh, so the key, how to answer this question, again, decrease FEV over FEC, Think about obstructive lung disease, okay? So that's how you think about how, you know, how to solve the questions. So it put you into COPD, bronchitis, emphysema, asthma, and the bronchiectasis. And then you have to figure out like which one is which, all right? Uh, so bronchitis, again, is like inflammations uh, with a lot of mucus. So a patient come in with cough, tons of mucus, and then you think about, and no reason, which is just, you know, you know cough with mucus and bronchitis. Emphysema is someone who smoke a lot, uh, usually an odor, and then you think about a destruction of the alveolar walls. Uh, so you think about that one. And when you do a chest X-ray for someone with emphysema, think about you know flattened diaphragm with hyper resonant um, percussions, and then with barrel ch uh, shaped chest. Okay. Uh, then asthma is reversible bronchospasm uh, with a lot of triggers. So, so when you think about triggers for asthma, think about cold air allergens. Um, so young patient with episodic wheezing, uh, some, somebody in the families have the same problems. 
and you think about asthma, uh, then bronch ectasis is very serious. It's sort of like, you know, infection. Uh, so think about necrotizing infections and their airways permanently dilated. And these are people that already have, uh, you know, sort of pre-existing lung disease like cystic fibrosis, uh, other like cardiogenic syndrome. So they, they are at risk for uh, recurrent infections, okay? All right. So, uh, and the one on the right is talk about uh, what sort of uh, trigger that can cause asthma. So think about, you know, pollens, animal, like pets, all right? So dust mites, uh, cockroaches, and then cigarette smoke is a big one. Uh, so you think about that, okay? Someone in the house smoking uh, could trigger asthma. The other one is air pollutants. Uh, sometimes we don't think about it. We, we, we live in, you know, like uh, a very uh, polluted uh, places, then people will tend to have more asthma. Infection can also predispose you to, to asthma, uh, but it's sort of like a different um, mechanism that causes you to, uh, to have asthma. And there's a couple of medication can cause you to have asthma, and one of them is aspirin, uh, which we can talk about a little bit about later. And also the other one is non-selective beta blockers. You know why non-selective beta blockers causes uh, asthma? I think Katu talked a little bit about it earlier. So why do beta blockers cause asthma? Cause block better two receptor, and yeah. better two receptor occurring relaxation in the lung, mm -hmm. and also if it blocking yeah. better two receptor, it can yeah. increase the the action of a uh, muscarinic receptor mm -hmm. and muscarinic C receptor number for contraction of mm. the so uh, what is the smooth muscle gland? Okay, so what is a beta blocker used for in general? Treatment of heart disease, like oh, hypertension. Heart, sorry, hypertension. Yeah, great. So, so they, tell me why, how does beta blockers uh, help with hypertension? Because the heart is a, um, innovated by, the, uh, by beta one block, uh, beta one receptor, mm -hmm. and beta one receptor in the um, sinus, the SA node and AB node, and it's increased the, the contraction and the heart mm -hmm. rate. So yeah, by that's blocking, heart rate. Yeah, that's not, uh, high, that's not, that's the heart rate. That's not the uh, hypertension. So hypertension it, is, Blood pressure within also, the blood vessel. Mm. Yeah, also like um, alpha one uh, receptor of the sympathetic mm -hmm. system, um, yeah. blinding the vascular mm -hmm. vascular vessels, and that and better, better one it contract um, action Good. of sympathetic system. So that's why I, I always the blood yeah, vessel. Yeah. So you think about beta one and beta two, okay, and then alpha. Yeah. Okay. So, so beta blockers block the vasoconstriction. So that's why to help, uh, you know, the blood to dilate a little bit. So to help with hypertension, but unfortunately it causes the lung to, uh, you know, to constrict. So that's why mm -hmm. when you give someone with hypertension, you don't give them like the, uh, the non-selective beta blocker. You have to give them selective because if it's non-selective, then it could affect the lung also. All right, and then the other one is a uh, cold air and the dry air. Um, so often anything that irritate the lung will cause the lung to, you know, cascade down the spiral. So it becomes inflamed. Once it becomes inflamed, it activates other cells and other cell releases more inflammatory cytokines. So it's like a, a, a pathway. And then uh, GERD can also cause this uh, um, uh, sort of, you know, asthma too, because GERD is acid, uh, acid reflux. So it sometimes it can uh, irritate not only esophagus, but also the, uh, the surrounding lung tissue, okay? And stress is, you know, everybody know that stress can cause anything. All right, so next question. So, so uh, when, I, when you guys do a question about the lung pathology and they give you the, um, you know, the uh, FEV over FDC, so always put them into different uh, buckets, you know, think of low uh, ratio versus normal or high ratio. So one, it become low, then you think about obstructed only. And if it's high and normal, you, you think about restrictive only, okay? So if it's obstructed, then you do the bronchodilator challenge, uh, right? So if you see that if the, if the FEV is increased, this is actually what they do in the hospital, right? They come in and then you give them one of those, uh, you know, like the, uh, uh, the bronchodilators. Uh, and then, you know, all of a sudden they become better. Then we think about like, oh, it's something reversible like asthma or COPD, all right? So if you do a challenge, if it's increased in asthma or COPD, all right, so uh, second question. So let's say the first patient that we have is diagnosed with asthma, and then we collected her sputum, right? And then we sent to the lab, and then we stain them and put them under the microscope, and this is what we see. Um, so I want you to name, name these 
because they will test you. Sometimes they will just show you a picture of this. This is taken out straight out first aid. I had a question about this, so that's why I put it up. I got a question about G. They put me a picture of G. If you're starting for step two, so I'm going to let you answer this one. <laughs> I think uh, it's not related to the uh, eosinophil, uh, yeah. uh, new, eosinophil new process. Okay. I mean, you got the eosinophil, that correct? That's, that's fine. Uh, why do you think it's uh, eosinophil, eosinophil? Because uh, eosinophil is the one of the uh, cell involved in the uh, immune response in college. Asthma pathology. Yeah. yeah. And what color is the stain that you see? Um, black? It's pink. Pink? Yeah. I, it's in a field when you stain it, it becomes pink because of the granules they have. All so right. what, the, what the black one? That's not really black. It's just because of the, it's too, too pink. It's oh, basically yeah. like, yeah. right? Yeah, so it's too pink, so that's why it become like a little bit black, but it's not really black. You see the stain is pink, so that's why. All right, so just remember this. Um, so when you do the mu, uh, you stain the sputum. Sometimes they have this they call the Kurtzman spirals. Basically, it just to shut epithelium uh, with sort of like mucus plugs. Uh, it's plucked together, so it formed that. But the more common uh, uh, picture that they show you is G. Uh, they call it a chocolate laden crystals. Uh, I absolutely think you need to know this one because they show it to me. Uh, one uh, and uh, also in in, you know, in the hospital sometimes you have TAM that you, you can collect the sputum and run down the lab and see it. Uh, so it's sort of like you know remember gout. Uh, it's sort of like the crystal like that, but this thing is more of an eosinophilic um, double pointed needle like crystal, and these are composed of eosinophils in the sputum. Okay. So you're correct, eosinophils is a main uh, player in one of these uh, uh, asthma pathology. All right, so this is straight up from, uh, um, from first aid. So you have to remember this. If the only two things that you need to remember about uh, histology for asthma, remember the Kurtzman spirals and then the uh, chocolate-laden crystals. All right, question three. So most of the cases of asthma occur due to a combination of environmental and genetic factors. Which of the following is the major mediator of asthma? Is it leukotrienes, eosinophilic chemotactic factors? Is it major basic protein from eosinophilic granules? Is it macrophages? E, I don't know. All right, who want to answer this? All right, I'm going to pick mate. Give it a try, mate. I think the answer could be B. It could be B? Why do you think it's B? Mm. You, can you, you remember I say you about eosinophilic? Eosinophil? Oh. You are correct. It's, you know, it has to do with eosinophil, but the reason why I put major mediator, what are the, some of the drugs that help with asthma? Uh, not some of the drugs? Okay. So, so SAVA, which is a short actin, right? The beta agonist, all right? A long beta agonist, okay? And then yeah. the mus anti-muscarinic. So those are acted on the muscle, right? It doesn't have anything to do with the, um, the cytokines, you know, that released by the inflammatory cells. But what are some of the drugs, the other drugs that help with asthma? Montelukast, right? Yeah, so Montelukast, what is Montelukast? Yeah, it is the leukotriene modifier. Exactly. So the, remember, not, they don't make drugs for no reason. So all these drugs have to target something, right? Yeah. So that's why that's why I want to bring you to this, the most important slide of this whole lecture. It's basically, it's the leukotrienes. Just remember, it's triggered the contraction of the smooth muscle, uh, and it causes like inflammation everywhere. Uh, but let's go to this slide, okay? So just, this is a slide that helps you sort of uh, think about the role of leukotriene and asthma. So when you think about asthma, think about leukotrienes, uh, okay? Uh, so how the leukotrienes are produced. Uh, so uh, you remember the ericotonic acid, which is an AA, uh, the same pathway that make um, 
leukotriene, but also make another uh, um, uh, uh, sort of prostaglandins. You remember prostaglandins at all? Okay. Uh, so I the do. Role, yeah, so the role of leukotriene and asthma is well studied, okay? Uh, so first, it's formed by eosinophils and also mast cells. So remember uh, chromalin, which is a mast cell uh, inhibitors, right? And then we have the eosinophils, uh, which can be activated. And then all this will release is the leukotrienes. And the leukotrienes we call inflammations. And what does inflammation do in the bronchioles? Uh, in the bronchioles? It causes the bronchial to become vasoconstrict. And sometimes it causes the, the, the airways to release histamine. And sometimes the mucus are produced, so it's blocked the airway. So not only the, the, the airways are constricted, but also it produces mucus. And it's become, so the diameter of the, of the airway become even less. Uh, so that's why you have trouble getting air in. So that's why when people are wheezing, they cannot get at the, any oxygen in. And some people, they become so bad that, you know, become respiratory failure. So that's why you have to um, sort of, you know, uh, put them on the machines. You have to, uh, um, what do you call it? Put, put, you know, a tube down their throat uh, to help them breathe because they cannot breathe uh, by their own. Uh, so leukotriene do two things. First, it called bronchial constrictions. The second thing it does is attract other uh, cells to come. So it, it's sort of like a chemo attractant. So it helps recruit eosinophil and neutrophils uh, to come to the site. And uh, these will uh, cause more inflammation to occur, okay? Uh, so that's why, uh, so the leukotriene uh, is, is very crucial. Uh, so that's why you can have the, uh, one of the target uh, for asthma uh, drug is a five, um, um, the LOX enzyme. So we cause a five lipoxy and uh, uh, sorry. Lipox, uh, lipo ox uh, oxygenase. Uh, so you block that uh, enzyme, then you can make, cannot make uh, leukotrienes. Um, so let go. Okay, so just remember that two drugs, the Montelukast, right? Uh, that's a leukotriene uh, in, uh, inhibitors. And also we have the other one, which is the five uh, lipoxy uh, oxygenase inhibitors. Uh, Zeloton, you guys know Zeloton? No. Okay. So zeloton no. is zeloton is uh, the inhibitors of the enzyme directly. The montelukast is it blocked the leukotriene. Okay. So it blocked the leukotriene over here, but the uh, zeloton blocked the enzyme. So you don't even make leukotrienes. Okay. All right. So next questions. This one is very interesting. So uh, you have a 50 years old man who present to the ED because of acute shortness of breath. Okay, and that started while he was shoveling snow in his driveway. So the patient is generally healthy and he was started on a new medication this week after his general checkup with his doctor. He has never had similar symptoms before. Uh, on physical exam, uh, he has labor breathing and wheezing bilaterally on both lung fields. Um, on physical exam, they found that he has nasal polyps on uh, present in his right uh, nearest. A chest x-ray is normal with no consolidation or intratrace. So which drug is responsible for this patient's symptoms? Is it an aspirin, is it lisinopril, corticosteroid, penicillin, or theophylines? All right, who wanna give it a crack? First, what does a patient has? What do you think the patient has? Yeah, I'll give you a hint, uh, nasal polyps. There's only one thing that involved in nasal polyps on step one. Maybe you know what it is? No. No? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's okay. All right, so uh, let's, let's go through it. Um, so first, let's go to the drug, okay? So aspirin, what is aspirin? We, we talk about aspirin all the time. Cost inhibitor. Okay, good. Uh, how about lisinopril? It's an ACE inhibitor. Okay, so it's, what does it do with? What, did, what does it help with? It treats hypertension. Is, mm -hmm. um, it inhibits the conversion of... Um, of ACE. Yeah, ACE yeah, I, of ACE, angiotensin mm -hmm. to 1, mm -hmm. 2, angiotensin 2. 
you know, what's the side, the common side effect of uh, ACE inhibitors? Mm. Cough. I did not cough. study that. Cough, exactly. So cough, cough. yeah. All right, so cough. How about corticosteroids? It's an immunosuppression. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so penicillin is just antibiotics. Uh, theophylline. What is it? What does it treat? Asthma. Yeah. So asthma. Okay. All right. So this you need to know because they always do it. Um, they always put it on step one. So uh, basically. What is presenting is that you have to know the triad, okay? So asthma with nasal polyps and recent exposure of aspirin. So this is aspirin-induced uh, asthma. Uh, so do you know, do, does people know why aspirin causes asthma? I it's know why. Yeah, how? Oh. I, I showed you the answer right on it. It's the image right there. Can I give it a try? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so aspirin acts on blocking the silo cyclooxygenase, and so it's mm -hmm. blocking like prostate prostate and from prostate. So when mm -hmm. it block one pathway, it will shunt in like the, me the metabolic will shunt into another pathway. So it yeah. like increase the the leukotriene A four pathway and mm -hmm. leukotriene non to like exactly. her asthma. So that's why. Yeah. So uh, remember the AA, which is ericodonic acid, is a common pathway for both uh, prostaglandin, tamboxin, and leukotriene. So if you have a COX inhibitor, which is a aspirin, um, if you block one pathway, it will shunt all of the ingredient to the other pathway. So just remember, if you block one pathway, the other pathway have more. Uh, so remember leukotrienes, our friendly friends uh, for asthma. More leukotriene is not good for asthma. Okay, so that's why if people take aspirin and they become uh, asthmatic, I mean, they have symptoms, uh, you know, like shortness of breath, and then you look into their nose and you have nasal polyps, then you think immediately about aspirin-mediated asthma. Okay, so that's only one condition that have nasal polyps in it. Um, so nasal polyp, think about aspirin asthma. All right, so uh, I think the most important part about asthma uh, when it comes to step one is knowing the drugs and how does it work. Uh, so we talk about asthma, basically it's a reversible bronchoconstriction and it acts via three pathway, right? So first is general inflammation. So uh, when your airway become inflamed, it just automatically, it become constricted and sometimes it causes uh, the mucus to produce or it causes the airway to become even uh, smaller. So that's why one of the ways to decrease the inflammation is corticosteroids, okay? Uh, so corticosteroids is uh, like the, the, you know, the last stop. Like if nothing else works, then you have to use corticosteroids because that will, the reason why, because you have a lot of side effects and it works on everything. Uh, so it's sort of like a last ditch effort. Uh, so that's why when you treat uh, stepwise, so you have like, you know, uh, sort of like intermittent and then you have severe and then very severe, and you only use oral corticosteroid uh, with the last step. You can also use, uh, you know, the, uh, they call it the inhale uh, corticosteroid. Uh, that one is a little bit better because only act uh, on the nasal um, mucosa. Uh, so when you inhale it in, uh, it's only act on your respiratory system, okay? It doesn't affect your general system, all right? So that's the first one, it's decreased inflammation. So think about corticosteroids. And then the second one is cytokines. So we talk about cytokines a lot. Uh, so what are the most important cytokines you need to remember for asthma is the leukotrienes, okay? So um, there are three things that you can block. The first one is Montelukast and Zafirlukast. Remember, uh, you know, we talk about the, the Lukast. So when I think of Lukast, something with anything with cast, I think of like a caps that I put on the leukotriene. So you put a caps on leukotriene, it doesn't work anymore. So just like a, a, a trick to remember. So anything like Montelukast, Cephalukast, think about leukotriene receptor blockers. So it put a caps on the, uh, on the leukotriene receptors, okay? And then above it, you know, before you make the leukotrienes, you need the enzyme, uh, which is a 5 uh, uh, lipooxygenase inhibitors. So the zeolaton, uh, there's no way I can, you know, sort of have like a mnemonic to help you. Just remember zeolaton is a, uh, phi lox. Uh, we call it a lipooxygenase inhibitor is lox. Uh, so, and then the other one is block the uh, omelazuzumab. Uh, you know what's the, what's the drugs when you read the, the anything with the uh, MAB at the end? You know what it stands for? It's an antibody. Yeah, so monoclonal antibodies. 
Um, so this is a new drug. Uh, it's basically is blocked cell activation via the anti IgE. So it blocked the IgE and it's, it just stopped the cell uh, from activated. So it mainly act on mast cells um, to become activated. Uh, and I think we talk a little about the uh, the constriction of the smooth muscle. Okay, so the whole problem is caused by the smooth muscle become constricted. Uh, so how you know? Mm -hmm. So it will help if you can stop the the, the construction of the smooth muscle. Uh, and one of the drugs that do that is the albuterol. Uh, so I do talk about it before is the beta agonist. So beta uh, agonist, it help uh, dilate the, uh, the, uh, uh, the smooth muscle in, you know, in the lungs, but uh, it causes vasoconstriction in the endothelium cells, okay? So it's, they have two separate uh, functions. Just to remember that, um, so beta causes vasoconstriction, uh, in the vessel, but it called vasodilation in the lungs. Uh, so the first one is the short actin, so we call it SABA. Uh, so short actin uh, beta agonist, uh, which is sort of like a, like we call it the rescue inhalers. Everyone have it, uh, pro air. Uh, I think in Vietnam, they have to use the same thing too. And then long actin is a little bit uh, different. Uh, so just remember anything that after albuterol is long actin. Uh, Theophilins. So uh, let's talk a little about the beta agonist. Uh, so what does a beta agonist do, right? Uh, so when you have ATP, which is the, uh, the cell, that, you know, the energy block for the cells, it's break down by uh, adenocyclase, which is AC, and it causes, uh, become, it converted into a cyclic AMP. So uh, you sort of have to go back into the, uh, the smooth muscle contraction. Uh, so they have three different uh, um, muscle, right? So we have, you have cardiac muscle, uh, you have smooth muscle, and then uh, you also have skeletal muscle. So there are three different uh, muscle, uh, but in cyclic AMP, mm -hmm. uh, smooth muscle, uh, elevated uh, concentration in cyclic AMP causes the bronchodilations, okay? So beta agonist uh, would cause that pathway. So that's why we use it, the uh, SABA and the LABA in that way. Uh, but uh, also one, the cyclic AMP, uh, it can be break, uh, break down uh, by the phosphodiesterase uh, to become AMP. So that's how uh, theophylline works. So it blocks that enzyme. So instead of being degraded uh, into AMP, now you have more cyclic AMP. So it helps with the bronchodilations, okay? And then uh, the thing that we talk about, um, the muscarinic antagonist. Uh, so remember, uh, smooth muscle or even skeletal muscle, you need acetylcholine to cause it to contraction. So if you block that pathway, you block the acetylcholine, uh, then you end up with the uh, smooth muscle not contracting. So it helps with uh, the vasodilation, okay? So remember the tyrotropium and the apratropium. So when you remember uh, anything with the opium to it, it's sort of like, uh, can, you know, it's, it's, it's stop the uh, smooth muscle. So opium, like you feel good. So you, you kind of relax, right? I don't know, you know, opium is like a-, a, a Opioid. Yeah, like opioid. So it's, it's help you, you know, you feel good. So your muscle just like relax. Okay. Now I have a quick question. Yeah, so I, I'm seeing in practice, like mm -hmm. um, a lot of doctors prescribe Montelukast to treat yeah. allergy. Mm -hmm. So does like what intrinsic property of Montelukast that can treat um, allergy, the allergy like have allergies? high concentration? What allergy? Nice. Seasonal allergy, very bad seasonal allergy. This, so they say use the same pathway, right? The leukotriene receptors. So remember, we talk about the uh, um, the atopic triad. Uh, so we have, uh, you know, allergic dermatitis, and then you have asthma, mm -hmm. and then you have uh, the last one, which is the allergic rhinitis. That's what mm -hmm. people have uh, because they have rhinitis. So that's the seasonal allergy. It's caused by the same thing, um, sort of hypersensitive. Uh, cells that releases the leukotrienes. So that's why the leukotriene helps with that. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, it just block the leukotrienes. Uh, that's mm -hmm. where all the, you know, all the allergic reaction comes from. So when you think of allergy reaction, so the three cells, like the mast cells, right? Mast cells, mm -hmm. uh, neutrophils, and then uh, eosinophil. Mm -hmm. one, of the, one of those three cells. So leukotriene mm -hmm. block the all right, so uh, when you think of asthma, I want you to think of this way. Uh, step one will not test you the, you know, the diagnosis a lot, but uh, sort of like the, you have to know the treatments, uh, mostly for step two, but it's also helped with step one, two. It's very complicated. Uh, so this is more like a simplified, uh, you know, uh, way to remember it. 
So when you think about asthma, you have to put them into a category, okay? Either whether it's intermittent or it's persistent, okay? So intermittent means that it's happened throughout the day, maybe one, you know, a couple of times, but it doesn't happen every day. So they, the patient could have like just once a week or twice a week. Uh, so when I think of intermittent, think of somebody just have uh, episodic asthma, uh, maybe once a week or twice a week, but usually no night symptoms at all. Uh, so on the test, we, they will make it very, you know, uh, clear that the patient have intermittent. Okay, so then we think about uh, persistence. So you put it into the bucket of, is it mild, is it moderate, or is it severe? Severe, everybody knows. Severe means that you just have asthma all the time. Like you cannot breathe even the day or at night. Uh, so that's severe, okay? And then now the problem is how you separate between mild and moderate. So the, the thing that I try to help uh, to separate between the two is daily. If you have daily asthma, like daily symptoms every day, then that put you into moderate persistent. Okay, so that just remember that if you have asthma every day, either you have moderate or severe. Severe means that you are sick, like you have to be in the hospital. If the patient can still breathe, okay, and then they can come to the hospital, come to the hospital themselves, then probably that's moderate uh, persistent. So the reason why we have to put into uh, different categories because the treatment for it is differently. So if you have intermittent um, asthma, then you only give, you only need the rescue inhaler, which is a short acting. Uh, so when you have trouble breathing, just take a puff and you'll be okay. So that's intermittent. And then if you have, so when you have uh, my persistent, uh, then you go up one ladder, okay? So I want you to remember the mnemonic silo. Uh, so that's how you go, uh, that's how you uh, escalate the treatment for asthma. So S stand for uh, short acting. I stand for inhaled corticosteroids. LAVA stand for long actins and O is stand for oral steroids, okay? So if you have intermittent, just give SAVA, just the short actins. If you have my persistent, then you give SAVA and you give the uh, inhaled corticosteroids, okay? And you have moderate persistent, and then you, you do SAVA and then you do the inhaled corticosteroid and then you do the, uh, the long actins. And remember, uh, inhaled corticosteroids have different doses too. It's have low dose, medium dose, and high dose. Okay, and then uh, for really severe, that's the only time that when you use oral steroids. Um, so you, 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 you know, put them on the oral steroid taper. And then the other treatment is alternative treatment. So remember we talked about the leukotriene receptor antagonist. Okay, know how it works. Theophylline, know how it works. Zeolaton and omalizumab. Uh, also, that's a new drug also. That's usually for treated people with like, you know, uh, exercise induce asthma or uh, that's more like allergic uh, kind of uh, re like um, asthma. I think someone has a question. Someone asked me if any experience used magnesium sulfate in severe asthma. I actually never heard of magnesium sulfate used for severe asthma. Hmm. Interesting. Can someone look it up for me? Magnesium sulfate for asthma? I thought that to use for um, maybe like TCA, yeah, yeah, TCA, uh, yeah, tricyclic, um, you know, like uh, toxicity. Yeah, I'm not sure about yeah. asthma. I only remember magnesium is uh, TCA toxicity. Okay, so this is a real treatment. See how complicated it is. It's so complicated that even I don't remember. Sometimes, like some of the doctors in the hospital. They just go and they look. Um, so, you know, just so the, my, my easier way to remember is just go back here, okay? Just go silo and then remember, you know, very severe, I mean, the patient is in trouble. Um, they have daily uh, symptoms and think about moderate, persistent, when they only have like from time to time, but really night, no nighttime symptoms and think about intermittent, okay? All right, so there's a lot to talk about asthma, but I think the most important slide is you have to understand the treatments uh, for for asthma because that's how they, they you're gonna be tested. Um, most likely, just mechanism how it works, and just remember uh, the asthma induced uh, attack when you see a nasal polyps, and then they have trouble breathing. See if they have any uh, recent exposure to aspirin. And the reason why I put aspirin over here is the patient is 50 years old man. 
So he probably has some cardiovascular, uh, you know, pro disease. So the doctors put him on aspirin, you know, to lower down the risk. Okay. All right. Any question, guys? So I should do a quick research about like magnesium sulfate. So it's more commonly used in the North Pacific uh, rather than the Western. And uh -huh. the lit literature review mm -hmm. just say that uh, used uh, as an adjunct to standard treatment may mm -hmm. be beneficial in the in the treatment of adult patient with severe life threatening. But mm -hmm. the role of nebulizer magnesium uh, um, magnesium sulfate is less evident mm -hmm. due to insufficient in okay. evidence. So, yeah. yeah. Good to know. Okay. Any other questions? I know it's a lot. Um, asthma is not easy because it's, it's, it's very complicated. There's so many drugs, uh, but that's the thing. You have to know every single drug, like what it does. Mm -hmm. So this is a real case I see in the clinic. Uh, my mm -hmm. patient has um, ASCVD. Mm -hmm. And she has like pulmonary regurgitation, mm. and she has symptom that I pretty much like, not like uh, she has a history with asthma, but now like she, she present to our clinic with um three month ongoing cough, and she had a very much symptom of asthma, but like mm. she she told me that the cold weather make her feel better, mm. so I don't understand that part. So um, so in that case. Is using better two agonists are gonna have her given her history with the heart disease. I'm sorry. We try so her. She has heart disease. Like she, she had like the a ASCVD, the pulmonary regurgitation. She also had mm -hmm. murmur. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I still she, don't uh, see the question. Yeah, I'm sorry. So she she had like complication revolving her like um her heart. You know, like of the um, ASCVD, the pulmonary regurgitation, mm -hmm. and she okay. presented to a clinic with mm -hmm. the co the complaint that pretty much like asthma symptom. Mm -hmm. And so my question is, can we use better agonists for her or not? Because Honestly, like I, when I, I asked, yeah, when I asked, like my. Our MIM3 say that we cannot because give, like it's risky yeah. to give her beta to agonist because of her heart. But like my understanding is if you were just acting on the beta 2 and then the heart was was um uh innovated by better one, then why the complication here? Like I just don't understand the connection between the two. So can you mm -hmm. explain more? Well, first of all, I, I still don't get a, like, the underlying problem with her heart disease. Does she have like congestive heart failure or what does she have like? So I don't she understand has, what, what, what do you mean by does she have asthma or? She had a history of asthma. She have history of the asthma, okay. Yeah. Yeah, but mm -hmm. uh, and she presented a clinic with the mm -hmm. symptom that very oh, much like so asthma. The patient have asthma and then the patient also had heart problems and uh, and they don't want to use beta, uh, beta, uh, basically the beta agonist. Is that the question? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. That's a like very. Why good, can't you use that? So that's a very yeah. good question. What's the side effect of the beta agonist? What do you think? Yeah, but we know that. But like, if we use a like tachycardia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if but but it's it less severe if we use it at inhala inhalation rather than like bill. And also, like if we use correct doses, because the but heart that's still, a, that's still a risk for the patients. Uh, so if the patient have the heart problem already, their heart is already at risk of becoming more, you know, um, weaker. So you don't want to do the problem is if your heart become weaker, right? You end up with uh, fluid backing up into the lungs. That will cause her asthma to become worse. So um, you, I think people don't try to like you know, treat the underlying heart disease by messing up with the medications. So the heart is very, like a very tender organ. So you don't want to mess it up uh, because, you know, there's other medication to treat with asthma. So why you, why stick with one that can cause us the side effect to the heart? Right? The problem is like, mm -hmm. we are not really sure that she had asthma. She had asthma-like symptom, but when we ask her exactly. about it, whether so the symptom it, get worse, 
Yeah, so if you if you if the, you're not sure the patient has asthma, you I don't think it's good for the, the patient to, you know, you try to risk that to treat asthma because you're not sure the patient has asthma or not. So why treating them? Because I think it's the last thing mm -hmm. to try because we try is her on Montelukia, Singular, yeah. um, and all the bunch of mm -hmm. like um, GERD, we try yeah. her on like. Um, okay, yeah, so let me ask you this, right? Bump. Let me ask you yeah. this. So is her symptoms very severe that she has to be hospitalized? It's severe enough to distress her from life. Like quality, mm -hmm. Her quality of life is very like um, okay. heavily impact. She could yeah. not sleep. She had to sleep upright. So, so that, do you yeah. think that's a heart problem or is that the lung problems? Like we think both but currently mm -hmm. like with because she presents to a student clinic she doesn't have insurance so yeah. we cannot do anything with her heart surgery or anything so so that's why we try to tackle it yeah so that's why you have side. so people prioritize right uh, when you see the mm -hmm. heart problems you treat the heart first because the if if you, if you treat the heart and it she still have problems problem in the lungs Broly, that means there's something wrong with the lungs Broly. so that's why you treat the heart first to see if her symptoms improve Right, and then if it's improving, that means that it's her heart. So, and then you can try to walk backward. If you treat the heart and it doesn't work, then it could probably her asthma. But in general, I think people try to attack the heart first. So, any any problem, you know, when people when you have a weak heart and all of a sudden you have pulmonary edema, people will also treat the heart first. Mm. You don't treat the lung first; you treat the heart first. So yeah, it's just tough let, let because us, no, yeah, let us know how it goes. But I think that's a, the general uh, thinking. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All yeah, right. yeah, and I think uh, even the patient have the heart failure, but uh, in the situation like uh, to describe that maybe she has a um, heart failure exacerbation, mm -hmm. and in yeah. that and in, yeah, and in that situation, mm -hmm. we we avoid to use the beta blocker yeah, for the exactly. for her. Yeah. Yeah. Because we also did her EKG and he, her EKG is good. There's no change from last time. That's why mm -hmm. I don't think mm -hmm. it's like chronic heart failure. But yeah. we'll, I will yeah. update you on that. Yeah. But very good. You know, like I want you just actively thinking, you know. So that's good. Mm. Okay. Any other questions? I think asthma is very interesting. It's very. So let me ask you this one last question before we. Uh, sort of, you know, uh, end the class. There's one physical exam that you can do for someone who has severe asthma. Do you know what it is? What? Okay, let, yeah, physical exam. Okay, have you heard of the term called poses paradoxes? Yeah, I heard that like in the mm -hmm. cardiac tamponade, right? Yeah, so uh, can you explain what poses paradoxes is? Like um, usually when you are uh, in the um, situation of uh, dyspnea, and uh, you breathe in, and uh, mm -hmm. the vein uh, on the the jugular vein, uh, the external jugular vein will collapse. But uh, in the situation of uh, asthma, uh, there is an increase the pressure in the lung in the thoracic. So when you breathe in, uh, the, the pulse of the external jugular vein will yeah, you pounce up. So we call that is the. Um, so like you, what is poses paradoxes? Uh, what's the definitions when you breathe in? If you are systolic, but pressure drops more than ten. Yeah. Then they call it poses paradoxes, and there's only a couple of uh, disease that you will have that uh, symptoms. So like you say, cardiac tamponade is one, right? But also yeah. severe COPD and severe asthma. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that's sort of just, you know, something to keep on the side when you see uh, on, you know, like on the exam, when they think about poses paradoxes, then just keep thinking about uh, cardiac tamponage, uh, you know, a severe asthma, severe COPD. Okay. All right. It's been fun. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the case, uh, Tao. Uh, hopefully that you guys can bring us more case next time. Sorry, uh, asthma is so complicated. Um, we didn't make our own slide. We sort of have to use someone else's slides. So it's not as good as our slides. But uh, hopefully next time we'll try to make our slides, okay? So All right. have a good topic. The topic yeah. next time is 
So oh, I, I don't know yet. About the- <laughs> I don't know yet. Uh, but maybe I was thinking about um, the GI because we talk about the lungs a lot, like tuberculosis, and we talk about uh, skeletal yeah. muscle. Maybe GI. So uh, I, maybe uh, you know um, uh, ascending cholangitis, uh, the whole shenanigans of you know the whole GI, like the um, gallstones, right? Cholelithiasis and cholelithiasis, you know, so that's that's very useful because they are tested all the time. All right. So. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Ryan. All right. Good night, guys.